Hi everyone, this is Penny from Wacko Witch Astrology and today we are doing a vlog. I felt like it was time, I felt like it was long overdue, I feel like I haven't updated you guys about anything that's going on and yeah it's hard to get personal and get vulnerable on a YouTube video and as a 12th house son and just as a human in general I think it's understandable that I don't always have the desire to do this. Um, but I, I do like being able to share certain things with you guys and I like it when you guys share things with me as well. So I'm going to share something that has been a recent life-changing development in my own life and that is embracing my Cherokee heritage. Now I used to always be afraid of talking about this because people would have such an aggressive response to someone with pale skin or someone who doesn't look like the stereotypical Native American that they have in their head. They would have such a hostile response to anyone saying that they were part Native American. Um, but I, I actually, I find that to be really sad and it goes back to a lot of the types of oppression that have been used against the Native American community for hundreds of years at this point and the attempts at cultural erasure and uh, I've, I've been learning even more about it lately and how bad it can be but I want to share my story from my perspective and just basically my experience with specifically being part Cherokee because um, Cherokee is the one tribe I know for a fact my family is descended from. I have paperwork on it. I have records. It's been verified and acknowledged by the tribe. And anyone who wants to argue with that really has no place to do it because the Native American people are still here. They still have their own voices and they have their own leaders and their own governments as well. They don't need random people on the internet or on the streets trying to call other people out and uh, dismiss their heritage. So I'm just going to talk a little bit like about that. Um, before I go any further, I like to clarify that I am a white girl. <laughs> who grew up in the suburbs and I know like that's that's where most of us grew up um for most people that's just the case and as a white girl who grew up in the suburbs um I am not an authority on anything tribal I'm not like a voice of the Native American community I am one person who is white and Cherokee and possibly hailing from uh, some other tribes that I have not yet identified, but I hope to, uh, who is sharing their own personal experience. And like all I have is the research and the information I've gotten from uh, other people in the community, which I have recently gotten a little bit more connected to recently. So when I was growing up, I knew from a young age that we were part Cherokee. My dad had always told us about that. And I didn't really know anything about it, the only thing that I ever learned in high school and grade school about Native Americans and not even about the specific tribes really, just about Native Americans in general is that they were connected to the earth, they were very respectful of the earth and they didn't like wasteful or destructive behaviors that were affecting the earth. And that was like basically all I learned and then I was told like the kind of um, silly warped story about Thanksgiving and you know I was told a whole series of things that weren't accurate like most people who grew up in the suburbs were taught about the Native Americans but the the one little hinted piece of information that I learned about Native American spirituality it always resonated with me like that's always how I personally had felt about things and it might be because of certain things like my parents had said to me but I always believed in respecting nature, uh, respecting all the animals, respecting plants, you know, not needlessly destroying things. And I would, I would find myself getting very offended whenever I saw someone doing that. Like even in elementary school, it was something I would get in fights, not physical fights, but like just verbal fights with people about. So by the time I was like a teenager, um, my dad had like told us that he like actually got all the paperwork and everything so we had our cards um, to I guess like verify that we're Cherokee for the, for the sake of all of that um, 
and uh, I thought it was kind of cool, but I didn't really say much about it because I was like playing that whole like angsty teenager thing, you know, just going to keep to myself. But I was, I was low-key excited about it. And then by the time I was an adult, so like I went through my life knowing that I was part Cherokee and I was, um, you know, obviously part white. Like that part's pretty obvious. I don't feel like I need to clarify that. Um, but I, I went through my life knowing that. And then by the time I was an adult, I was 19 and I had moved to New York City and I had seen like how segregated it was there which was insane to me. Like if you've never been to New York City, it's like the black people live in, mostly in this one part of Brooklyn. And then I think there's like Harlem or something too. I didn't really go into Harlem much, so I don't remember it well. Uh, but it's mostly like the black people live over here. And then it was like, a, there was a Jewish community over here. And then like, I think Queens was mostly like the Latina Hispanic community. And then there's like um, the hipster white people group in Brooklyn. And then there's like the rich white people in the majority of Manhattan. I don't know how much it's changed since the last time I've been there, but when I was 19, I actually lived there for a little while and I experienced the segregation. And um, I had never seen segregation that extreme before, so it was kind of shocking to me. But I was walking down the street in Manhattan because I was trying to uh, get a job. I was like running around applying for jobs and stuff. And I saw these two black men protesting on the street with um, I think they had a megaphone. I can't remember for sure at this point. They might not have, but they had a picture of uh, black Jesus and they were basically just like telling people Jesus was black. So I wanted to stop and I wanted to listen to hear what they were saying. But when I stopped to listen to them, they basically yelled at me and they called me out for being white. And they were just talking about all the horrible things that white people did and just their horrible perception of white people and I, I I wasn't like scared for my life or anything like that I was like embarrassed and I felt awkward and I felt bad so I'm like what else do I really see at this point I'm like um well I'm part Native American too <laughs> and they're like haha no you're not bitch you, you. and you know they're like cursing at me and stuff and they're like you're not Native American you're white you're so white and that was like my first time really realizing that in our society it was not often okay to talk about being part Native American. And you know, I've learned since then that this is what random, honestly ignorant Americans do. That is what they do because a lot of us were led to believe that Native Americans, as well as bison, like I was told bison in Buffalo were extinct um, when I was a kid in school. That's what they taught me in school and it's not true. They're, they're still here. They almost went extinct, but they are still here and they're being revived. But we were kind of made to believe that like Native American people are just totally gone. Like they disappeared. Like they're not here at all anymore. And that's not true. The, the tribes are still here. So yeah, that was, that was my first time experiencing that. And then I mostly just didn't talk about it again after that because then I got the impression that it was kind of unsafe to bring it up. But then when I would meet someone else who was part Cherokee, I would tell them that I was part Cherokee too. And we usually had like a bond and we would talk about um, some Cherokee things sometimes. Like, But my knowledge of it was like very small. I had a very small sample of Cherokee culture and Cherokee heritage for the most of my life. Even though I was interested in learning more uh, when I would try to look it up on Google, I just really wouldn't find anything. There really wasn't much coming up in my searches. So I didn't know much about it. But uh, in more recent times, I've seen people like start to get even more aggressive about like spiritual segregation to an extent. You know, saying that certain things are closed practices, saying that you shouldn't mix with other people, you shouldn't mix with other cultures, you shouldn't, um, if you're white, you should only practice white spirituality. If you're black, you should only practice black spirituality, all that kind of thing. And then the problem that I ran into is that one of some of the things that I was taught from a fellow Cherokee person, I had a white person attack me on the internet saying that I can't practice that. And I was seeing that all the time, basically, whenever someone brought up something about 
Native American spiritual beliefs, I would see that they would just treat it like it was a cold, closed practice and like anyone um, outside of the, um, uh, what do you call it, the land, the reservations, the designated territories for Native Americans shouldn't be talking about it, which is awful. Like, I, I think it's awful and to me it feels, like this is my personal opinion, but it feels like it's another way to try to force the culture to die. And that's what people have been trying to do for so long. And I don't, I don't want to tolerate it. That's, that's one thing I decided. I don't want to tolerate it anymore. And when I actually talk to Cherokee people themselves, and I, I listen to people who are representatives of the Cherokee tribe and making decisions on behalf of the Cherokee tribe, they don't act that way. They honor people's Cherokee heritage. If you have a Cherokee ancestor and you can prove it, then they will honor you as part of the tribe. And they won't even, in my experience, they don't even refer to you as being part Cherokee. They'll just refer to you as being Cherokee. Because Cherokee people have mixed with so many different other cultures, and there are some very dark-skinned Cherokee, and then there are some very light-skinned Cherokee, like myself, obviously not a full-blood Cherokee right here, and the Cherokee people know that, and family is very important to them. They're not going to deny their family just because there's a difference in skin tone or just because of whitewashing or just because it's what the U.S. government tried to force us to do at one point. And I feel like there's still a lot of just regular people who try to force the Cherokee community as well as other Native American tribes into this segregation and into this cultural erasure and they might not even realize that's what they're doing. But what they're, whether they realize it or not, what they're doing is, is destructive and it is harmful. And I want that to become a little more known. So I can't remember how I ended up on this tangent. Like I, whew, I just like went way to off. But I want to back up a little bit and I want to talk about the Dawes Act. So the Dawes Act is how I know that I'm part Cherokee. And it's from what I gather from... Um, the Cherokee community it is pretty much like the number one way that we figure out who's Cherokee nowadays. It's like, it's the thing, like this is the whether or not you're Cherokee thing. Um, and it applies to some other native tribes as well. It's not just the Cherokees that were included on the Dawes Act. But basically what it was, was after the Trail of Tears, um, they, some of the white people, some of the settlers had decided that they were still like a Native American problem because they're they're on the land that we want for ourselves and they're um, succeeding in life. They're still thriving. What can we do to make them stop thriving? So they came up with this thing called the Dawes Act and I've done a lot of research on it. I've heard a lot of mixed things and I think what keeps it a little bit convoluted is the fact that they tried to present the Dawes Act like it was something good for Native Americans. Like it was something good that they were offering them to help them out. And it, it I don't think it was. It, I think it, for the most part, it screwed them over further. It created further problems. And instead of just like letting them stay on their homeland or whatever land they had ended up in on that point, because a lot of them had already been kind of like pushed away, um, instead of just letting them stay there and letting them continue to live from the life they have built, they had to travel from wherever they were, you know, where it was, I think Tennessee, Georgia, but all those states were still affected by this. And they had to travel all the way to Oklahoma from there. So it also, I need to actually read it. I need to actually find the documents and read it rather than reading other people's like explanations of it. But it sounds like it further emphasized that if you are like a registered Native American, you are supposed to stay in the territory we gave you in Oklahoma and you're not allowed to move anywhere else. And then they ended up coming and taking the land in Oklahoma anyway, after the Dawes Act. So it does sound like it was something that kind of further screwed over uh, the Cherokee people, as well as some of the other peoples who were included on the Dawes Act. And, but yeah, that's, um, today that's how we can verify and specifically emphasize to the U.S. government that we are 
descendants of Cherokee ancestors and we are entitled to the rights that they promised us because that's another thing um, a lot of people believe that the U.S. government has tried to weasel its way out of keeping its promises to the Cherokee people as well as the other tribes by basically just denying the fact that Cherokees are still around, trying to claim that people aren't Cherokee, and trying to claim that we don't have Cherokee ancestors. So that's what I learned about the Dawes Act, basically. And um, for... For me, I, I learned about my specific family members who were included on the Dawes Act, and I'm still doing some um, genealogy research on my mom's side as well, so I can learn more about that. I know that the Cherokee is from my dad's side. But anyway, <laughs> where was I going? I really can't remember where I was going with that. So basically, yeah, there's, there's all of that, and there's still this fight for the Native American community to um, maintain the land they were promised, to hold the United States government accountable to the promises it made. Um, and there's there's been a lot of horrible oppression. You can, you can read about it if you want to. But at this point, the, the Dawes Act, it, it almost seems like a good thing at this point because it gives us confirmation that specifically came from the United States government that we are Cherokee or we are whatever tribe. Um, and the, the only bad thing that came of that is you had to pick one tribe and a lot of tribes were mixed. Um, I mean, that's not the one bad thing. The bad thing is that they got screwed over. But in terms of keeping records, um, a, a lot of people were mixed. You know, they came from a variety of different tribes and you had to pick one tribe on the Dawes Act. You had to be identified as being from one specific tribe. So there's still certain parts of people's culture and heritage that um, they might have been estranged from at that point. But the good thing about the Dawes Act is we already have these official documents from the U.S. government that prove that it was them agreeing that we are, in fact, from the tribe that we are from. So it almost seems like a good thing at this point, despite everything that happened. But what I really, truly wanted to share in this video is um, the, the journey I have been going on in finally embracing my Cherokee heritage and finally resisting the oppression where people told me, and like, again, it wasn't people in the Cherokee community, it was people outside of the Cherokee community who were trying to tell me, I can't do that because I'm white. I need to stay away from that because I'm white and I need to just be white and white only. But the thing is, that's not true to who I am. That, that's not 100% of who I am. There's um, another culture, another heritage inside of me that I find to be really beautiful, that I find to be really fulfilling, and that I do feel connected to. And you know, the, the more I learn about it for the most part, the more I love it. And I feel like it has brought me a lot of healing to be able to learn more about Cherokee practices, Cherokee people, and Cherokee spirituality. I've been listening to Cherokee music every day. I've been watching um, OCO TV which I'll try to remember to link in the description, but it is a Cherokee YouTube channel where they basically um, show the lives of various Cherokee people and just show what they're doing and you get to learn a little bit more about them. So I've been really grateful for that. It's been um, an amazing healing journey for me and I'm looking forward to exploring more and um, visiting some of the lands that were designated for us and uh, maybe visiting the motherland as well. And I'm, I'm just really, I'm really happy for that and I wanna be able to share it and I don't want to have to like make it um, like a secret anymore. I don't wanna have to keep it hush hush and I'm not gonna let other people who have no right, who have no authority over this, I'm not going to let people who don't even have authority over this try to tell me that I need to suppress my own heritage and not talk about it. I'm not going to let those people who don't know what they're talking about try to tell me what I am or am not allowed to talk about. So that's why I wanted to share this here with you today. And um, thank you for taking the time to watch this. Like, thank you for taking the time to care about my life and care about me and uh, care about 
um, my YouTube channel. So if, if you don't already know, I usually share content about astrology and I've been doing pick a card tarot readings as well. And I have some services that I offer specifically for those things. If you want to check those out, you can view the other videos on my channel. And um, yeah, I hope to see you again. Subscribe if you want to. If you don't want to, then bye. Just please don't leave a mean comment because I don't like seeing them and I turn off notifications when I see too many mean comments. Okay, bye.